Good morning. Welcome to everyone. Here, those watching online, um, wherever you are, may God be with you. Today is the first Sunday of Lent, so the theme, as always on that first Sunday, is uh, Christ's temptation in the wilderness. Today, Giselle will be leading the service, I'll be preaching. Um, there are no vestry group leaders today, so we have no vestry group. Um, so I'm afraid, uh, vestry group people, you'll have to listen to my sermon instead. Uh, many of you will already have heard this, but I have sad news to pass on that Ian Hamilton died on Monday this week. Um, his funeral uh, will be on Friday the 8th of March, 12.45 at Stockport Crematorium. Um, everyone is welcome to that. And then two o'clock in church. Uh, I say thank you to Nathan and Eleanor who are accompanying us through the service today. So over to Giselle. In this season of Lent, we prepare ourselves for the celebration of Easter. As we gather at the Lord's table, we must recall the promises and warnings given to us in the scriptures, and so examine ourselves and repent of all our sins. We should give thanks to God for his redemption of the world through his Son, Jesus Christ. And as we remember Jesus Christ's death for us, and receive the pledge of his love, resolve to serve him in holiness and righteousness in all the days of our life. And we start with our first hymn, hymn number 120, 40 days and 40 nights. going to move the piece to just before communion so we're moving on to page one in the name of the father the son and the holy spirit amen, amen. the lord be with you 
Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. Blessed are those who suffer persecution for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. God shows his love for us in that, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Let us then show our love for him by confessing our sins in penitence and faith. Father eternal, giver of light and grace, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in what we have thought, in what we have said and done, through ignorance, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We have wounded your love and marred your image in us. We are sorry and ashamed and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and lead us from dark or darkness to walk as children of light. Amen. <coughs> Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who in his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all those with heartfelt repentance and true faith, Turn to him and have mercy on you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Collet for the first Sunday of Lent. Almighty God, whose Son Jesus Christ fasted 40 days in the wilderness and was tempted as we are, yet without sin, give us grace to discipline ourselves in obedience to your Spirit, and as you know our weakness, so may we know your power to save through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. First reading is taken from Genesis chapter 9. Then God said to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, this is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. 
I have set my bow in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth, and the bow is seen in the, in the clouds, I will remember my covenant, that is, between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the water shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, This is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. This is the word of the Lord. We'll have our next hymn, hymn number 127. Lord Jesus, think on me. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirits descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved, with you I am well pleased. And the spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness for 40 days, tempted by Satan and he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. This is the gospel of the Lord. 
May I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. A member of my last congregation had a poster up in her kitchen which said, Lead me not into temptation, I can find my own way there by myself without any help. <laughs> Temptation is one of the great themes of Lent. We've just heard the story of Jesus in the wilderness, tempted by Satan. It's something we also face as we try to follow Christ in our daily lives. So Jesus taught his disciples and us to pray lead us not into temptation. But it's a difficult line to understand. We know that because some of the very early church fathers wrestled with the meaning of this line. Why would God ever lead us into temptation? It doesn't fit our image of a loving God. Forgive me, I'm going to get a little technical here. Um, the New Testament was written in Greek, but Jesus didn't speak in Greek. He spoke in Hebrew or Aramaic. So if you try to reconstruct the Hebrew behind the Greek, the Hebrew was ambiguous. It could either mean, don't lead us into temptation, or do not allow us to be led into temptation presumably by the Satan or somebody else. That second interpretation perhaps fits better our understanding. It also fits with Jesus' words in Gethsemane to his disciples when he said, watch and pray so that you do not enter into temptation. Nevertheless, the Lord's Prayer that we say, that has been said for centuries, comes to us via the Greek and says clearly, do not lead us into temptation. So how can we make sense of those words as we pray them? First of all, I think we have to notice it's a pair with the line that comes before in the Lord's Prayer, which asks God to forgive us. But it's not just enough to seek forgiveness for what we have done, we also need help to prevent us slipping into sin again. So we pray both to God for, to forgive us for our past sins and to strengthen us against future sins. Do not lead us into temptation. We tend in our current society, I think, to trivialise the word temptation. We tend to use it of things like cream cakes or else perhaps temptation is often applied to um, sex and sexual sins. But the Greek has a much wider range of meanings. Yes, it does mean temptation as we understand. It also means the time of testing and trial, a time of affliction and hardship. Some of you may remember I think back in the 1970s when we had the series three service um, book, the Lord's Prayer had the line, do not bring us to the time of trial. Um, that, I think alongside, do not lead us into temptation, catches more of the breadth of that word, that, that line in the prayer. But times of trial, affliction, hardship, and ever things we would seek, so we pray to God, don't lead us into those times, spare us from those times. However, as we know, those times come to us unbidden. 
is a very rare person who gets through life without some trauma or tragedy along the way. These are the times that test us. They test what we're made of. We can't come through these times unscathed. We're affected by them, one way or another. I've seen, and this is a mystery, I'm sure you've seen too, some people who've been through some really hard times and are left bitter as a result of it. They feel life has been unfair to them. But then I've also seen others who've been through terrible suffering and come out the other side stronger, wiser, more humble, more compassionate, perhaps more holy even, because of those times of hardship and trial. Some years ago, I read a book about prayer in the hard times, and I was really struck by this passage, which he was talking about the marriage relationship, but he applied it by analogy to prayer. When we're young and romantic, we say, for better, for worse. And we're sincere. But what we mean is, I hope and believe it will all be better. But if the worst comes, I'll try to survive it with God's grace. It never enters our minds that the worst is just as necessary for the growth of love as the better. And yet it's true. The hard times are not obstacles to the growth of love, though they may seem so when we're young. Rather, they are a necessary part of the experience by which real love comes to be. I think there's so much wisdom in that. The hard times are a necessary part of the experience by which real love comes to be. So although we may pray to God that he will spare us from these testing times, we also know they can be times which bring deep spiritual growth. In the Bible, the ultimate temptation is not food or sex, but selfishness. If you believe the rule of life is to look after number one, then you can ignore the hunger, the injustice, the suffering of other people. You just look after yourself. But as Christians, we can't do that. We can't turn a blind eye to the problems around us or in the news. We live in a culture that often promotes values quite different from those God asks of us. It's not easy to live unselfishly in a world which is dominated by profit, consumer philosophy, and a self-first attitude. To go against that isn't easy. So inevitably, we're choosing a way that involves temptation and trial. We see it in Jesus' ministry, which begins with a trial in the wilderness and continues as he challenges the society he lived in when its values were at variance with God's values. This inevitably led to opposition, ultimately to the cross. So for us to follow Christ means to prepare ourselves for a life in which we will encounter trials. As Jesus said to his disciples, you are those who have continued with me in my trials. It's the same word as is translated temptation in the Lord's Prayer. But experience tells me that the more we try to do God's will, the more we encounter the flaws in our own nature, the flaws, the weak spots that undermine our best intentions. This perversity in human nature seems to be inescapable. As St. Paul says, in a moment of real honesty, I do not understand my own actions. 
For I do not do the good I mean to do, but I do the evil that I don't want to do. That's what I end up doing. This temptation is incredibly subtle. It finds our weakest spot and works on it. We all have different weak spots. For some, it might be cowardice. For others, it might be a love of money. For others, it might be a desire to be popular and liked by other people. We experience this temptation as an unbidden voice which whispers in our inner ear. For some, that's personified and called Satan or the devil. Again, if I'm technical about the Greek, in the Lord's Prayer, when we pray, deliver us from evil, it could either mean evil as an abstract force, or it could be translated as deliver us from the evil one. Both translations are equally correct. If we're honest with ourselves, then we'll know that this voice is so subtle and has such a powerful influence over us, we can never overcome it purely by our own willpower. We need God's help. So take comfort in what St. Paul says. God is faithful and will not let you be tempted beyond your own strength. But with the temptation, he will also provide a way of escape so that you may be able to endure it. I also love these words of Julian of Norwich. God did not say, you shall not be tempest-tossed, but he did say, you shall not be overcome. So when we pray, lead us not into temptation, I think we're saying something like this. Father, help us to trust you to lead us through life. When we encounter temptation, help us not to be led astray from your way. Spare us from the times of trial, hardship and affliction, which we fear may be too much for us. But give us your resources of grace, so when we do face these hard tests in life, we may not only survive them, but come out of them the other side stronger, wiser, more humble, like metal that's been tested and proved in the fire. Recognising that they are a necessary part of the experience by which real love comes to be. So Lord, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Let us now declare our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified by Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated on the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. 
and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Please sit or kneel, or whichever is more comfortable, as we have our intercessions. These prayers were written and prepared for us by Judith. In the power of the Spirit, and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Loving and gracious God, we pray for the Universal Church, particularly the Episcopal Church of Sudan, and its primate, Ezekiel Kondo. We also pray for our Diocese of Chester, and continue to remember Christians in the persecuted church. We give thanks and pray for all who minister in your church, whether clergy or laity. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As we begin the observation of Lent, with hearing about the start of Jesus' earthly ministry, let us reflect on our lives, our situations, and our practices. Great creator of life and of the universe, who fashioned humanity from the created world, let us repent of the sin in our lives and of any actions which have harmed the world of which we are a part. We pray for all people in areas of war, violence, natural disaster, and environmental degradation. And we pray for all agencies which minister to them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who are ill, in mind, body, or spirit, and all who minister to them. Bless and strengthen all who work in the health and care services and all the many people who care for family and friends. We also pray for medical and emergency workers in critical situations around the world and for the many who have no access to care. Of our community, we remember Elizabeth Whitton, Brenda Kiniston, and Peter Jenner. We pray for Tracy Miles, and also any known to us individually. Let's pause for a moment to bring to mind their names and their needs. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of love, we remember those who have recently left this life and are now in your greater light. Christine Martin, Brian Lindley, and, of course, Ian, Ian Hamilton. May all who mourn them, especially Christine and Neil, know your love and support as they grieve. At their year's mind, we give thanks for Harold Gwither, Diane Bull, Lynn Deleuze, Peter Horton, Jack Marsh, and Frida Freeman. We also think of Alexei Navalny and others who've died as a result of persecution. 
we each also recall those we have loved and are now gone from our sight, trusting that they are in your keeping. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, draw us to a deeper and more real life in you. May our belief be not just a religious label, but a commitment which is seen in all we do and are. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. So we come to the piece which is just in the inside of the front cover. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us access to his grace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer one another a sign of the peace. So we have our next hymn, hymn number 464, Sweet Sacrament Divine.
as the grain once scattered in the fields and the grapes once dispersed on the hillside are now reunited on this table in bread and wine. So, Lord, may your whole church soon be gathered together from the corners of the earth into your kingdom. worthy of our thanks and praise Lord God of truth for by the breath of your mouth you have spoken your word and all things have come into being you fashioned us in your image and placed it in the garden of your delight though we chose the path of rebellion you would not abandon your own again and again you drew us into your covenant of grace you gave your people the law and taught us by your prophets to look for your reign and of justice, mercy and peace. As we watch for the signs of your kingdom on earth, we echo the song of the angels in heaven, evermore praising you and singing. Lord God, you are the most holy one, enthroned in splendour and light. Yet in the coming of your Son, Jesus Christ, you reveal the power of your love, made perfect in our human weakness. Embracing our humanity, Jesus showed us the way of salvation, loving us to the end. He gave himself to death for us, dying for his own. He set us free from the bonds of sin, that we might rise and reign with him in glory. On the night he gave himself up for us all, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. And he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim that he suffered on the cross We celebrate his resurrection, his bursting from the tomb. We rejoice that he reigns at your right hand on high and we long for his coming in glory. Christ is the bread of life.
as we recall one perfect sacrifice and our redemption father by your holy spirit let these gifts of your creation be to us the body and blood of our lord jesus christ form us into the likeness of christ and make us a perfect offering in your sight look with favor on your people and in your mercy hear the cry of our hearts bless the earth heal the sick let the oppressed go free and fill your church with the power from on high gather your people from the ends of the earth to feast with st thomas and all your saints at the table in your kingdom where the new creation is brought to perfection in jesus christ our lord by whom and with whom and in whom in the unity of the holy spirit all honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. And as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us all sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Every time we eat this bread and drink this wine, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Most merciful Lord, your love compels us to come in. Our hands were unclean, our hearts were unprepared. We were not fit even to eat the crumbs from under your table. But you, Lord, are the God of our salvation and share your bread with sinners. So cleanse and feed us with the precious body and blood of your Son, that he may live with us and we in him and that we with the whole company of Christ may sit and eat in your kingdom. Amen.
and so say together, Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your son and brought us home, dying and living. He declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We who the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. That might be me. So looking through this week, tonight we have our monthly choral evensong, this time a special one to mark the history week for LGBTQ plus community. Uh, this week also our Lent groups begin, so there are two opportunities on Wednesday at 11.15, following on from the morning communion and coffee, and then 7.30 in the evening both in the Mellor Centre. Uh, there are, I think, still some books, booklets available on the stand um, there, which give you a, a short reading uh, and a prayer for each day through Lent. You don't need to use those books or the larger book, Tarry a While, though you're welcome to. Uh, Claire will provide resources so you can just come along and take part in the discussion without preparation. On Friday this week at 11.30 is the funeral of Brian Lindley at Stockport Crematorium. The next Sunday, the 8.30 service is as usual. At 10 o'clock, we'll have a special service with an emphasis on inclusivity, with a liturgy put together by Liz Shercliffe, who will be presiding, using some alternative texts from around the Anglican Communion. Then again, next Sunday, 6.30, there'll be a quiet, reflective service in the parish centre. I wanted to say a thank you to all the members of St Thomas' congregation who came to the Churches Together service on Wednesday evening for Ash Wednesday. We were in double figures, which made me proud that we were not just a congregation who meets here, but we go out uh, also. Um, I also want to apologise that I announced the service would start at 6.30, and actually it started at 7. Um, I have some excuse. Originally, we were told 6.30, then it was changed a week before the service to 7, but I didn't read that email. Um, so our congregation not only turned out in force, but were extra holy with a half hour of extra prayer before the start. Doubly proud of you. Um, on the first Friday, the 1st of March, is the Women's World Day of Prayer service. That's at Methodist Marple Church, Marple Methodist Church. Um, on the service sheet, it says Friday the 3rd. It can all the 3rd uh, stick with a Friday, Friday the 1st. Um, we have Mellor's Got Talent coming up on the 9th of March. Um, tickets are available on, on Eventbrite. I'm looking forward to my first experience of this one. And on Saturday the 16th of March is the big clean up for Easter. So uh, if you're free that day, come along any time between 10 and 3, I think, to take part in uh, a cleaning up of the church to, to get ready for our major festival and celebration. Just a reminder, uh, you may not have taken the date in, Ian Hamilton's funeral we're planning for Friday the 8th of March, 12.45 at Stockport Crematorium, 2 p.m. in church. You're welcome to come to both or either of those services. Are there any other notices people want to give? <coughs> then we sing our final hymn, which I think is number 128, Jesus, you lover of my soul. <laughs>
Christ give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourselves, take up your cross and follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ.
Yeah. <laughs>